Power 96.5. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, a senior moment with your host, Terry Saunders. We talk about your health, staying healthy, your growth in your golden years, and so much more. And now, a senior moment with your host, Kerry Saunders. Okay, good morning, good morning. This is uh, Kerry Saunders on the Senior Moment Radio Show. You can listen to me here every Saturday on WUFO Radio 96.5, 1080, or you can go to Facebook and uh, listen up after the show on my on my Senior Moment radio page, though. Um, not on regular Facebook. But anyway, so that's what you can do today. Today we have on a Senior Moment, we have uh, our guests are uh, Sarah Norat Phillips and Gabrielle McKinley and from the Ujima Theater. We're going to be talking all about the upcoming play, uh, Wedding Band, you know. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, first, our guests, we have we do have a special... Real quick, guess our guest is going to be Mike uh, Payne from the Crashly Payne Agency, and they're they're having a health, wealth, and what uh, web webinar at the YMCA on William Street in Buffalo. So we're going to talk about that real quick. That sounds like that's going to be very interesting. Um, you know, we're proud to have our sponsorship. Our sponsor is uh, Roswell Park Roswell Park uh, Cancer Center uh, is the sponsor of a CMO radio show. I think I said that. But you know what? If you ever have a problem with, um, you know, your doctor said you have a tumor or something, to you you need to go to Roswell. I, I say this every week: how important screening is, how important it is to go to Roswell if you have a tumor. Go, don't go to one of those outlying agencies. You go right to a place that's all they do is cancer. You know, it's Roswell Park. And uh, if you need any information about screening, just call Roswell. Um, they usually have a lot of stuff in, in, in the community, but I don't have anything today. So, uh, Roswell Park. Uh, you know, I, I went there for screening, and uh, they saved me, so um, they helped me. So, I mean, just go ahead. Roswell's the place to go, you know, um, if you have a cancer problem. Uh, weather outside is nice. You know, it's to be 50 degrees today. The sun's out, you know. The sun's out, and, and uh, we hope it's like this on Monday during the eclipse because we've heard so much about the eclipse. <laughs> so much about the eclipse. That's, that's Yeah, so much. And, yeah, make sure you wear your glasses. So I, I can't wait. I'm going to be at home in my backyard with my glasses on, uh, looking up and see what happens on Monday. It should be spectacular. I mean, everybody's talking so much about it, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's get right to our show because we've got Mike Payne in here today, and we're going to get right to him and, and talk about uh, his agency, the the Christie Payne Agency. The so, Mike... Payne Agency, actually. Chris, what? The Payne Agency. It's just the Payne Agency? Yep. It, it, oh, yep. so just, it's just, just you. Just me, yep. Oh, okay, so the other guy sliced the weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Tell our listeners about the pain agency and, and, and what you do real quick. I appreciate it, Kerry. So Let me just I, put this over to you. Go I ahead. consider myself the, the, uh, the most Western New York's most unique insurance agency because we do Medicare, health insurance, life insurance, employee benefits, mm -hmm. your ancillary, like your dental vision and other benefits. And also uh, we do veteran needs and also life resources. So we connect people to the communities, to resources in the community that is vitally needed. And that's one of the reasons why I'm working with uh, the YMC, the Emsley YMCA uh, in down here in downtown Buffalo, and also M and T Bank, uh, the branch that's there, to bring together a what's called a Spring into Health and Wealth event, uh, where we're bringing not only to the community in East Buffalo uh, resources, whether it's mental health, whether it's trauma, whether it's nutrition, whether it's uh, legal, financial, housing, transportation, getting Medicaid applications signed, just. You know, any any or public assistance needs that need to be met. We, we're putting all these resources. So we have like nearly 20 different uh, community organizations or businesses that are going to be at this event. Uh, we're going to even have a, a chiropractor there to do a gentle massage or gentle touch for the people that do come there because, you know, we know that and also talking about self-care and, you know, and, and health equity and things like that. Those are very big needs, uh, in the, in especially coming after... Um, you know, we're coming up on the second anniversary of the 514, uh, you know, uh, tragedy, unfortunately. And, and But we're still people that are needing that help. So that's that's one of the reasons why we're doing that. So you, that's why, you know, so, I, you know, and I want to thank you because when we do all our senior events, you've been helping out with sponsorships and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's the pain agency now, right? Yep, it's the pain agency right. now. Okay. So now, and so thank you for all that. And what you do in the pain agency is that you sell insurance, um, Medicare and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But 
you're an agency that you sell all types of insurance. Correct. I like that because you know everybody like you get one one company that will come and try to get everything, but you have a choice. You give a choice to people. Correct. Right? Okay. So the 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 health and wellness webinar is going to be at the YMCA. What date? It's Wednesday, April 17th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So we're going we're gonna to have the vendors are going to be in the gymnasium. Uh -huh. And then what we're going to do after the, during the course of the day in the community room, we're actually going to have a, every vendor, at least there's about 15 speakers that day, are going to do a 15-minute quick presentation about some of the services. Wednesday, April 17th. Oh, so that's next week. Uh, yeah, in yeah, a couple weeks. Week, 10 days. Roughly. And so it's going to be at the YMCA on William Street. Mm -hmm. What time does it start? It starts at 10 a.m. We promptly, everyone gets going to get there Are at you 10 a.m. We have food and beverages will be served. I'm coming. Yes. <laughs> 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 Carrie, you're always welcome, my friend. So, so. you got the, the webinar, the pain agency at the YMCA, April 17th. Uh, and we like to just say thank you because you're going to start joining the, the Waffle family, the paying agency, right? You're going to yes, start doing are. commercials here and stuff like that. Yep. That's really good stuff. Yep. And, and uh, so uh, what, the, supporting, the community is supporting your, your mission as well and to you know, bring yes. health and awareness to the community That's at large. That's the mission here. So. That is the whole mission, that, that our listeners are healthy and we can put some more um, time on our lives. Um, you know. uh, so what do you want to see happen during this health and uh, the, the webinar what do you want to see happen the event in general what i would like to see carrie is that the community gets the resources that they need i i'm a firm believer in knowledge is power but until you apply that knowledge is when mm -hmm. it does become power mm -hmm. a lot of people may know about stuff or, or or maybe they're still in fear or they still don't know who to turn to who where to ask um and we're just we're just out there feet on the street and it just Putting the word out to people that there is help and we will you, you can just come freely you don't have to worry about anything we're here to give you the community at large the resources that they truly truly desperately need so uh, the pain agency with the YMCA on Emsley are gonna do a, a, a webinar on health wellness and um, and I yep. think you have to do it right you hit that because knowledge is power right and so we hope to see you soon I, I'm looking forward to it, and just so everyone knows, it is an actual event, not a webinar. I don't want to make sure. Oh, so, yeah, but it is, you know, yeah, there's, there's, so, yeah. actually, well, well, excuse the webinar, just show up at the YMCA, just show up. Exactly. April 17th, just show up. <laughs> and you're going to have a good time, and you get to meet Mike, and Mike, thank you so much for being part of uh, everything you're doing for the community. That's very important. It's, it's very important because yeah. I'm very passionate about, right. you know, serving the, the communities that we serve, because we're not just only here in Western New York, we're in multiple communities across the country. Uh, you know, we, mostly on the eastern seaboard, Cleveland, and other communities. Okay. And so we, we're definitely working with, and this is kind of our bread and butter, working in the, in the, the lower income communities where we serve and serving veterans is one, also one of why, why we, I consider us uh, unique. Well, we're so. going to see what you got to offer, because, you know, and thank you for being part of the team. Oh, I appreciate it. Have a good day, and um, too, my friend. don't forget your glasses. You got, I you got, got glasses home. You got glasses? Look up. <laughs> and see what's going to happen. They said it's going to get cold when this thing happens, <laughs> uh, with the uh, eclipse. They said it'll get colder. So we got to get going. Um, Mike, thank you so much. We're going to have you on the show again, of course. Yes. A couple more times to talk about some stuff. April 17th, YMCA, Health and Wellness Fair, food to serve. You can you can get screening and stuff like that, right? And we'll get access to screening. Access to screening and everything else at, this, at the YMCA, April 17th. Call them if you want to go. Um, it should be fun. It should be a lot of fun. So now I'm going to go right over here. I'm going to turn this thing over here like this. <laughs> yes. Can I see it too? Yes, yes. it's magic. We have, uh, we have uh, Sarah Nor Norat Phillips and Gabrielle McKinley um, from uh, Eugenia Theater. You, everybody, heard, most people have heard about Eugenia Theater. And, uh, and so we want to get right into it because we've we got a lot to talk about. Uh, so Sarah... You're, you're the artistic director for Ujima Theater, right? I am right now. Yes, I okay. am. Okay, so tell us about Ujima Theater and, and what you do over there. Tell us sure. about Ujima Theater. Sure. You, well, uh, for those of us who know us, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we have been in this community for 45 years. Uh, we are, in fact, celebrating our 45th anniversary mm -hmm. this year. Okay. This is our 45th anniversary season of producing uh, theater. Uh, it was a company of, it's an ensemble company that was founded by Lorna C. Hill. Uh, everyone in the community knows Lorna. She was a, a force of nature, a brilliant, beautiful, talented uh, genius uh, of a theater artist. And um, 
We are situated, we are, we are currently in School 77. We have a beautiful 130 seat theater that's been uh, recently renovated. Uh, and uh, it is from that space that we produce our work. This year we uh, did a, a little, little bit of a departure. We went uh, downtown, we did the color purple down at Shays. It was a, a rousing success. Thank you to the community for coming out the way you did to support it. Um, the next show that we're going to be doing, a wedding band, is going to be in Our House, uh, which is at 429 Plymouth Street in uh, Buffalo, and uh, we hope that you will come out as well. I promise you, it will be a good time. Now, you know what? You brought up Color Purple, so I'm going to go there, because I had already <laughs> planned on talking to you about it. And before I go to Gabrielle, uh, so... I went to see the Color Purple at downtown Buffalo. It was uh -huh. at seven six seven ten seven ten mm -hmm. theater? It was yep. a great show. It Thank was you. A great. You you directed that, right? I did that direct was that. Absolutely. If you missed this show, the, the Color Purple, directed by Sarah uh, uh, Norat, you missed a great show. And it was at seven ten Down Street Main Street downtown. And so, tell us about how how successful the show was. It was an enormous Color. success. In fact, it was. Um, according to Shay's records, uh -huh. the largest, highest grossing show that the 710 has ever seen. Wow. Um, and it was largely based on the backs of the African American yeah, community. Yeah, by the African community. You we know, showed we up. Showed, showed up, up, showed out, yeah. had a good time, yeah. you know, let, let the actors know they were having yeah. a good time. It was so, really quite So you had such, it was such a great show, you know, it was surprisingly good. I was like, wow. You know what I mean? <laughs> Was like, oh, I told you it was going to be yeah, good. Yeah, it was so good. <laughs> and, um, so what else are you going to do with 710? Um, not, this upcoming season that starts in September, right. we don't have a show in the upcoming season, but we are going to do uh, the opening of the our following season is also going to be a project down at 710, and I can't tell you're you gonna because, tell me, but you're because gonna, it's under wraps. You're going to direct, direct it? I don't know that I'll be directing it, but I will be involved. How long have <laughs> you, so you been in the business? Oh, boy. Um, I'm a founding member of the company, so I've oh, been with Eugenia, with Eugenia yeah. for 45 oh, years. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I lived, I also worked here in the community, and I'd worked on Channel 7 for uh, mm -hmm. 20, almost 30 years, uh, and... Then I left Buffalo, and then I came back when uh, Lorna got really ill, and she asked me to uh, guide the young artist through this transition um, to a new uh, reality without Lorna. Uh, and I am proud to say that the company is as strong and as vital so as you, it's ever been. Eugene was on the West. It was on Elmwood. Was it? it was on Elmwood for a long yeah, time. And so yeah, and so now you on. Um, Plymouth. Plymouth. Are people finding their way over there? Yes, they are. Yes, okay. they are. We have, um, and in fact, this season at, at our space at the Mercy Hill Theater, we have had more audience finding us. It takes a while, right? You, right. you, you change addresses. Now you're yeah. on the west side. Mm -hmm. um, we are in the building that is owned by Push Buffalo. Uh, they created a space. This it's a it's really a beautiful theater. I I can't tell you how proud we are of it. It's got these big, wide, comfortable red seats, uh, and it seats 130 people, and, and it's got all the facilities that you need: light, sound. It's really quite a quite a special so place. Are you doing major productions over there? Yes. Okay. In fact, the show that we're getting ready to do uh, is a full blown. Uh, production. I, I would love to go, and I would love if we could give out some tickets here. You will. That'd be great. We will make uh, that happen. <laughs> uh, Gabriella, so you are the program director for Ujima Theater? Yes, I am. So, what do you do over there? Tell us about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so, there, you know? so a, a huge part of Ujima is our mm -hmm. social justice, right, community advocacy work. Okay. And that's where I come in. Uh -huh. So I'm, I coordinate all of our programming, our collaborations with other community partners and, and co community collaborators, mm -hmm. and I bring them into the theater. So for each of our shows, we also have a community collaboration, and right. we have one coming up for Wedding Band as well that is still in the work, so I'm also not going to get too far into that. But for each of our shows, we do have something that allows the community to not only engage with the show, but to engage with their community and with other so resources that are available. So that's really what I do. And most importantly, one of my favorite parts of my job is running the Dunbar Youth Theater Arts Program. Now I want to talk about that. Yes, absolutely. But I want to get into the new play first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that you're, that you're, yes, that you're absolutely. starting, right? Well, first I'll say, Gabby, Gabriella, is the lead, is the lead, lead actress. I want to ask you, <laughs> I am. I want to ask you because you're, are you directing Wedding I Band? I am directing Wedding Band. So you got some direct talent. So this is going to be a, I can tell this is going to be oh, a great it's show. Gonna, it's going to be a smoker. Listen, people, you got to go. <laughs> 
OC wedding band. I'm telling you, it's going to be and a smoker. It's going to smoke the house down. Mm -hmm. uh, Gabby, of course. Tell of us about will... wedding band. Yes. Tell us about uh, wedding band. Wedding band and was written by Alice Childress. Okay. And Alice Childress is an iconic uh, black writer, playwright mm -hmm. uh, from the 1960s. She wrote this play uh, in 1966. It's, it takes place in South Carolina. In 1918, so it's a period piece. Piece will have full costumes and and uh, music and everything that's reflective of that time. It is a play about um, interracial love. Oh, okay. And and uh, the reason I selected it for this season, uh, because you know you select plays well in advance. We were in the middle of the pandemic. It was uh, 2020, and. Um, the, of course, the Black Lives Matter movement was front and center, and we were also dealing with the pandemic. Well, in this play, uh, this couple is dealing with um, racial hatred because they are a black and white couple who love each other at, during the time when in South Carolina, a black and white man could not, a black and uh, white uh, couple could not even cohabitate, much less marry. Um, so that whole issue of miscegenation and those laws that were in place uh, and the difficulties that people had with black-white relations. And then on top of that, they had the Spanish flu going on. For those people who don't know about the Spanish flu, it killed 500,000 Americans, very much the way the COVID-19 did. So for me, when I took a look at this play, which we have done, Ujima has done it in the past, it's been uh, over 20 years since we did it, um, this play reflected how far we haven't come as a country, right? Because we're still dealing with issues mm -hmm. of racial inequity, and then we were dealing with the issues of this horrible illness mm -hmm. that was pandemic. sweeping yeah. through through the country. So, so it's wedding, very, very telling. Wedding band is based on a, a, a back in the, was it, you said the 40s? 1918. 1918. Oh, geez, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, 1918. It was, it was black and white relationships back then trying to survive in this country? No, rarely, rarely, because yeah, yeah. it was completely illegal. Right. Um, and so what happens okay. is that, that this white man who comes to visit his love, Julia, mm -hmm. um, has, the, has the flu. He has the pandemic. He brings it with him. Um, and then what happens is he falls ill while he's there visiting, and the whole community, the black community that Julia lives in, now has to deal with um, the issues of this white man who is in their enclave, in their homes, mm -hmm. um, where he's not supposed to be, and he's ill, uh, and he's in uh, with he's there because of this black woman. What a show! Yeah, it's it that's, is something. That's, that's it is do. something. And then you hear that. the only way Listen to get him out is to get his mom. His mother has to come right. from where she is. She's never met this black woman. Um, she so has she to doesn't come. Even, does she know that she's black? She knows does that she's th black. She's known she's black for a while. Of course, she doesn't does like black? it. Oh, she doesn't like okay. <laughs> um, it. But she has to come and get him right? Uh, to take him out and get him to a doctor because they can't call an ambulance. They can't call the police. they won't come to... They, they well, won't, they'll come, illegal, but they'll arrest everyone. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know? Wow. Yeah, it this is It is a, a wonderful show. drama. What it is, is a wonderful so drama. So, Gabriella, you're going to be um, the lead actress. Yes, I will. Um, well, tell us about your part and who you are. What are you doing in the show? Yeah, well, Julia is the, she's the, she is the lead. It, I recently found out that so, Lorna C. Hill originated this role at Ujima. So Ju Julia is the wife. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, the, the <laughs> they're not. They're not official. They're not legally married. Right. But, yes. well, I mean, he's the but girl, she's the love the of his life. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Right. She's she's his love, and she's the one that is trying to save his life amidst all the the drama and the the tragedy that is how this hatred mm -hmm. and this race hatred is usurping the love. Right, and is usurping their ability to love each other and to take care of each other, and allowing people to just take care of other people. Um, it is inevitably why I think that you know he falls he falls very ill and is a. Uh... Did you play in color purple? Yes, she I was silly. silly. I thought so. <laughs> I was waiting for I that got, to come up. I got silly in the house. I got silly in the house. In color purple. Wow, that is so cool. I thought you were silly. You did a great job. Thank you. Oh my gosh, you it was the hardest thing. I've I've ever done for professionally. <laughs> you, you, you could have fooled me. How long have you been acting? My whole life. I've really? been acting since I was three. Yeah. Wow. So you're going to be the lead role in, in Wedding Band. So she this is, is going to be good. I, I tell Gabriella she's my muse. Right. Um, <laughs> oh my God, and Sarah's my idol. <laughs> Do you ever have people from Ujima go into the 
to, to, to Broadway? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, one of our actresses, in fact, a woman named Rosalind Ruff, was just honored with a, art, a, a Hall, Walk of Flame star here in uh, Buffalo. Oh, she's, yeah, you know, Rosalind uh, was on this line. show. Uh -huh. I, you know what? I didn't, I didn't figure her out until I said, you look like... <laughs> um, uh, uh, Hill Street Blues. I mean, I, um, 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 you know, she's the, she was the, the the DA on, um, um. Oh, she's done so much work. Yeah, she was on a series that, uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, was, uh, uh, but anyway, she was the DA on, on, on a series. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and I said, you look familiar. And she, I said, oh, that's who you are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she had a series on Channel 4. Yeah. Yep. Uh, at, 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 um, not Hill Street Blues, but it's, it's something like that. But okay, so you have a lot of talent working with you. Yeah. Yes, we do. It's, right. a, it's an extraordinarily talented ensemble. Right. Um, so many of our off, actors. Roz and Ross. Yeah, Roz, with, Roz with is actually started off at the Paul Robeson. Uh -huh. um, but she did become a member of Ujima Theater Company, and she worked with us for a number of years. I heard this girl named Gabrielle McKinley is going to be a star one day. Too. We, we believe so. Yeah. We believe so. We're, we're hoping that she's going to be with us for a little while. We don't, we don't want to run it off just yeah. yet. Well, they lost, um, if they saw Color Purple, you, you, you know, if they saw Color Purple. Ujima's my home. Ujima's really? Ujima's yeah. your home? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. And so, yeah, it is a, it's an extraordinary play, um, and Alice Childress, who wrote the play, um, was fairly well known at the time, and when they published it, there were a number of producers who wanted to do the show, wanted to produce it off-Broadway, uh, and then, um, but they told her that the material was a little too tough. You know, right. the, it was too much for their You're audiences. About wedding yes. Okay, wow. It was, it was too much for their audiences, wow. which were, of course, primarily uh, white audiences at the time. Okay. Excuse me, I have a caller. Okay. Caller? Caller? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Well, thank you for calling into a senior moment. I have uh, 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 um, Sarah. Sarah Norrett and uh, Gabrielle. Gabrielle McKinley, too. Very, very popular people. Are you team of theater? Yes. yes. Okay, but I was talking to Ed Lawrence. You remember Ed? Sure. Have you talked to Sarah now? Uh-huh, absolutely. Well, I was listening to you guys, and I was asking him about Lorna. Yeah, Lorna passed in uh, 2020. Um, she, uh, it was a, it was a recurring, it was in the middle of the pandemic, so it was a very tough year for the theater company. We, between, um, not being able to produce any work and the passing of Lorna, she did not pass of COVID. I, I want to make sure that people are aware of that because there's people, okay, yeah. uh, she, she passed of, uh, a second bout with cancer. Um, so, and she oh. was, was treated at Roswell very, very well yeah. for, for those last three or four years of her life in and out. So, yeah, it's a tremendous resource yeah. in this community. Because I remember her from having concerts in there. Uh-huh. You know? And, and yeah. um, Lorna actually started what we have, our, our young Dunbar Youth Program. Um, it was called Youth Theater Workshop at the time, and we did it over on the east side for many, many, many years, and it has now developed into Dunbar, which we still do, our youth uh, theater training program. Mm -hmm. Carla, thank you, you know, for. I'm gonna get some information from you guys. I'll be in touch with you. I thank you. Don't hey, forget. don't forget to come and see the wedding band. Spread that around. That sounds like it's gonna be very. I know. I was listening to yeah. that. Yeah. It's, it's really I good. Can't. What date? Okay. What date? It opens on May 3rd. Okay. It's gonna run for three weekends. So it, it closes on Sunday, May 19th. Okay. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday right. and Saturday, seven thirty. And see that. Sunday, there's a matinee at four. So if you go to church and grab something to eat, right. then you can come to the show. It's a four o'clock matinee, nope. and tickets are thirty five dollars, but it's twenty five dollars for seniors. And if it's a group of ten, so you can bring friends, family, your church group, we'll get you an even better price and than twenty five. And we'll 25. be able to give tickets away here on Waffle House. Yes, we're going to get you some tickets to give away. All right, great. So listen to uh, see a moment. Thank you for listening to see a moment. So let's talk about the Dunbar program. Yes. The Dunbar program 
is you, you're teaching youth how to be yes. they actors work in, Eugene work? in theater arts, exactly. all yeah. kinds of theater arts. Exactly. Well, we like to we like to say and you're the program director. I sure right. am. Okay. Right. Daily teacher. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's a so they, they're in good hands. Then wow, professional they're in, teacher. They're in very. Hey, did very you work in performing arts? I'm sorry. No, uh -huh. I'm not. A, I'm not from Buffalo. I'm uh -huh. from Staten Island. Okay. And I came here to go to Buff State College and well, uh, university. Sorry, uh -huh. <laughs> Buffalo State University. And I trained there for four years, and then I graduated, and I did some work and. I did some other teaching artist work and some teaching work, and then I made my way to Ujima. Okay. Yeah, so that's a little bit of my background. But the Dunbar Youth Theater Arts Program is a pre-professional training program for, for youth. We focus in dance, acting, um, and uh, vocal music. Though this spring masterclass series is what's happening right now. We're doing lots of different things, and we're offering a lot of different ways for the youth to be involved and try new things. So they're having stage combat. They're having African drums, African dance. They're having poetry, right? Lots of different things for them to explore. And in the summer and in the fall, that's when they really work on using those skills that they're harnessing in the spring and in the summer, right? And they're putting them on stage to put in, put on public performances. Because that's one of the end goals, is to allow them to be able to take stage, take it confidently, be confident young people, confident performers. Right. So is the Dunbar program free? Yes. Oh, absolutely. So it's, it's free? Yes. Or it well, how do you sign up? So kids can actually go to Ujima and learn... Theater craft. Theater craft, mm -hmm. and yes. you'll teach them. Yes. And so, how do they, how, how do they get involved? In all, all you got to do is go to our website, <laughs> or okay. or our Instagram, or our uh -huh. Facebook, right, uh -huh. where you can go to Ujima, so it's U-J-I-M-A, mm -hmm. C-O. I N C so ujimacoinc.org and if you go to our education page click on the Dunbar Youth Theater Arts program mm -hmm. and you'll see what, whatever we have going on at that time which right now is the spring master class series you can click on that right there and, and it's register free. it's totally free it is free it is uh, student Stop. ages 12 through 18 12 through 18 they have to be told to learn how to act so if you're if you're listening or you know somebody who's listening um, or you know someone uh, and you know a kid that has, the, has an interest. Has an interest in acting. You see them acting out in the mirror or something like that. Mm -hmm. or Because, you know, the singing have a dancing. lot of talent. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and it's it extraordinary. Has to be fostered, right? And it, it does. does. It and, does. It, and it manifests itself in different ways, right? So even if there's someone that likes to talk a lot or they just like to hang out with their When did you know you wanted to be an actress, Gary Brigham? <laughs> My mom first needed me, needed me to do something, and she saw that I talked a lot. Right, she saw that I was very expressive, and she said, "Well, would you want to do that in front of other people?" Well, oh, okay. of course. Right. So when I was three, she put me in stagecoach, which used to be in Brooklyn, New York. She put me there, and then I kept doing that, and then I went to school, middle school, well, elementary school and middle school for Whoa. theater. Then I went to high school for theater. Then I started doing it on my break time, on summers and any vacation. I would just keep doing theater, theater. It's addictive. It's addictive. <laughs> it is. So they call you Gabby. Oh. Yes. So if you hear somebody in the, in the audience saying, Gary! <laughs> that's, that's, that's me. But you, know, well, you know it's me. <laughs> well, Gabby, do your thing. Wow, Ujima Theater, yes. May 8th. May 3rd. May 3rd. Through, May 3rd. through, through, through the, the 19th. Through the 19th. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wedding band sounds like a great, great... I want you guys coming back on before it starts, if you can. Sure, we'll get, we'll I mean, get back when in. When do you start rehearsing? It gets real oh, busy. We're in rehearsal. Oh, you're in rehearsal right now? Wow. <laughs> we're in rehearsal. Right, yeah. right. rehearsal is usually at least five weeks before the right. show ever opens to the public. Okay. Every night. So, okay. you know, they, wow. they work hard. And so it's going to be at Ujima? Yes, 429 Plymouth Street. Uh, it is in what used to be School 77. It is now the headquarters for Push right. Buffalo. It has a private entrance. Um, there's a very small parking lot, so parking, you should come early mm -hmm. if you're going to come. Yes. Um, but, yeah, it's a great theater. Uh, I, we have probably, I, I call it one of the premier theaters in town oh, for, I say the, that every for time. the smaller theater companies. It's really quite really stunning. Nice. It's, it's really a beautiful space. Uh, you know what, I, 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 I haven't been in that one. You should, you should come. Yeah. We can give you a little tour, take you backstage, great, great. show you the tech area. The tech area is gorgeous. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah, I just want to come and see Wedding Band. I think that's going to be a very interesting play. How long have you been in that space? We have been in, the uh, in this school. Down, right? Yeah, it did. Yeah, okay, it, yeah, okay. we, we had just moved into the school mm -hmm. maybe a year and a half right. before the pandemic struck. Okay. So there were only two shows that were done there before the pandemic. And then, of course, it was almost a year and a half before we did anything. So, so real quick, Sarah, because we got to yes. go. Okay. Uh, wedding band, give us a date again. Wedding back May 3rd through May 19th. Tickets at Ujima. Coinc.com. That's U J I M A. Oh, dot org. Mm -hmm. Sorry, U J I M A 
C O I N C dot O R G. You and I know if you call Buffalo, we wouldn't mind giving you the information um, and letting you know where is it. Uh, tell us about Dunbar real quick because we got to go. Dunbar Youth Theater Arts Program, pre professional training for youth 12 through 18, free of charge. And I'm talking to Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> Come and see that show. I can't wait. Thank you wait, so, man. Much, Thank you so Karen. much, Really this, appreciate it. This is Carrie Saunders on the CMO Radio Show. We'll see you here next week on uh, WFO Radio 96.5, 11 a.m. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Don't forget to wear your glasses on <laughs> Monday. And don't forget to go see Wedding Band because I'm going to go see it. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Saunders. Join Gary every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. right here for a senior morning.